All right, good morning all. Uh, we want to discuss this, uh, this topic, creating Zamani projects. This is a beginner project, I mean, the beginner video on Zamani. So we want to see how we can create Zamani projects, like that, and how we can manipulate uh, the 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 projects. So let's start. If you have your Xamarin, if you have a VS Code open, you click on this create new file, new project. And then we want to use Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms is, the, is, is what actually enables you to create cross-platform applications. Applications. And um, by cross-platform, we mean uh, you, you create one project that can be deployed to iOS, Android, Windows, uh, mobile applications. Even though actually the shell for Windows is not yet uh, ready. So you click on this, that means you can only create Android and iOS. Click on it and click on what? Next. After clicking on next, you supply the, pro the project name. Let's say first. Uh, first, uh, let me see CCO. Uh, Zamarin class, for example. Then you select where you want to uh, uh, the location where you want to store your project. This is where I store my projects, and then you click on create. So. This is where you select templates. You can go for the flyout, as you can see. Uh, it's something, it has some um, ready-made uh, ready modules for you, for the UI. And then you have tabbed and you have blank. For us to understand what we are actually doing, let's go for the blank. And then you click on what? Print. So your projects, We'll get created and configured by the summary. So the project is, is done, it's been created. These are um, things we need to understand from the the solution explorer you know Zamarin calls project solution so this is the solution folder that is the project folder there are three folders as you can see the first folder is this the Zamarin class second folder is this the Zamarin class dot android third folder is this Xamarin class the what? Iris. So this Android folder is what contains the Android uh, solution based on the projects. As you know, we said we uh, as we said, you know, we we're going to create two different pro I mean one one project that is going to be deployed on Android and what? On iOS. And then this one is for the iOS. And this is what uh, the, the C sharp or the, the Xamarin gives to the developers where you're going to write things that are common for the two. Okay? So, if you look at it very well, the, the Xamarin class Android uh, folder is bolded. That means you have set it to be the active. Right? So whatever you're doing, it is it is being directed towards uh, you are testing, you are going to debug the project based on Android. So if you want to debug based on iOS, you right click and set it. You set as what startup project. Okay? If you do that, then you see the highlighter move to the iOS. Are we there? So uh, 
Now let's concentrate on because the emulator I've installed in my system is the Android emulator. So let's move to this. And then uh, there are a lot of things we are going to discuss here right now. Let me first of all run the application. So if you want to run, you come to the words. You come to the emulator site and select the emulator you want to run. This is the emulator I run. This is the form emulator. And I click on it, start running. Can you see? Start executing the program. And when it is done, the emulator will show up, will display the the what? The result of the program, which we haven't written anything. Okay? So before then, let's uh, have a tour on this solution folders. This is where our dependencies are, where the libraries are. Libraries for the C sharp, libraries for all all libraries that we're going to be using. Okay? The packages, the nuggets, and all that are here. You see, sometimes if you want to use something, a kind of a resource, it has to be what? It has to be actually uh, uh, downloaded and integrated as, as the case may be. And then this is the, the main page. If you double click it, this is what it opens to. This is the main page. And uh, we are going to talk about, we are going to discuss this main page. It is the landing page, if you like, the index. This is the page that begins running whenever you run your application. But then you can redirect it to run on, on a different page. You can create another page and redirect the system to run a different page. As maybe we might be going to do it right now. And then this is the app.zam. App.zam, if you click, you know, I told you, if you see something the zam, then it has to have the CS. The exam and the dots. If you click on it, it gives you information about the application completely. How the application starts, how it's, it goes goes on sleep, how it resumes. You know, this is what you do with your phones, right? So, now if you look at the, the application, get initialized. Like this zooming is too, too, too big. I think it is visible as it is, right? So, if you look at it, it's a class that has been declared and that has been created and it has some uh, methods in it where this initialized component, this is what invoked your program to start up. But then, while starting up, which of the pages is going to pick or invoke, or which of the yeah uh, pages is going to pick or invoke? There's something called main page. And then this main page is going to you give you give it a kind of an object. This object is named main object because you want it to call main page. If you look, if you check from your uh, from the well, solution explorer this is the main page so it's going to call the main page and it gets executed so if you want to redirect it you create another page and then you give it that, the name of that page and it's going to uh, so our emulator has already started and it has this is what it has it has uh, 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 split welcome to xamarin forms Welcome to Xamarin Forms. Um, I don't want to temper with the main page because we might use it later. Let's create another page and then we will direct the running of the application 
through that page we are going to create and uh, let's see what will happen so um, now from the solution explorer let me zoom in for you if you see from the solution explorer of course i know we are aware of what we call the mbvm right so let's start doing something even though i'm not going to introduce mbvm for now because we are just starting but um what we do let's create views instead of just uh, instead of us creating page anyhow or anywhere let's create views and cite the page you are going to create there so we do something uh, at least uh, close to down the MVPM standard. So you right click here and then you click on add. Please look at where I right click on the what? The class, the, the project. Right? And you, you add something. I'm going to add a folder. And then I'll right click. Okay, I have to stop the emulator from running for me to do this correctly. Otherwise, I'll be having problems. So I'll right click and rename it. And I'm going to rename it as what? Views. Views. So it has been renamed now. All pages to be created are to be centered around, are to be created within views. Right? Then you right click and create maybe let's say we're creating a, a a new item let's create a content page okay content page we can create content page with uh with zam and we can create content page with what c sharp let's go by the zam because um, we're going to be using zam to to write some um, to introduce our uh, controls right so let's let's give it name registration for example registration what registration page and we add click on the add button so i think now we can <coughs> Please let's check from the from the views. This is the view, right? Yes, let me close all this. Right. So if you click on it, you see what registration was the ZAM. Alright. So if you double click on this, it gives you the ZAM. And then uh, then we have what? The dot ZAM and then the dot CS. The dot CS is the class that holds the 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 code behind to put it that way the code behind that's where you create your functionalities and everything well um the dot cs enables you to create what i mean the dot zam enables you to create your 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 components your controls i mean so let me run okay before running I would like to uh, redirect the application to run from the created, uh, new created uh, something uh, page. And I go to where? App.zam. And then I move to app.zam. And uh, the dot CS, I mean app. Dot, the, 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 the zam dot CS. So you see, this is the main page. This is like. Um, on an object variable right yes and this is the object right so we're going to create a new object here we're not going to use that one then we call it what registration registration <coughs> ensure that you type the the correct name for the page if created registration page of course it's going to give you this because of you need to import it from where from the view folder into here 
right? You need to import, as you know, as in the case of um, importing libraries, we all know this, um, as a Java developers, we, you know how to do that. So you say, using what? This. Here, if you want to import something, you say, use it. It's all like that of Java, where you say, import of this, 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 you know So you see, can you see here? So that means it has been imported. So the error message goes up. Okay, then you say, right? So when I click on run, it starts executing. So that means it's going to execute our, uh, let's wait for it to execute this because we're going to work on, um, on this. So while it is executing, let me write something on the board. Okay, it's like it's going to finish right now. Or before, instead of a board, let's write since maybe others are following us uh, remotely. Let me just do something. I would have done this, I'm sorry. Uh, I want a situation whereby, um, okay, let me just quickly do something here. I think this is what we start with. Right? Let's assume this is our our phone. Okay. Our page. And I want to create something here. Let's say a label. In which then I want to create um, an entry here. This is this is an entry where somebody you know uh, click to supply input to the system. Let's just, just say that I don't want to waste time, too much time here. And then I create something like a button here that says maybe click. This is what I want to do. Maybe it says click. Let's say click me. If you click on this button, you will supply something and you click on this button, it displays on this level. Mm -hmm. At least, uh, I think we're going to have an idea of how to uh, kind of write the functionalities or something. Right? Yes. So, so now, all right. Very good, Tita Fran. This is what we have. I think it is too big. Let's see something. So, this is our emulator. And it has run to this. Welcome to Zamari Forms. Now, why has it displayed that? Is that um, that's what is being written on the level. So let's go to the Solution Explorer, and then we check on the the view, and this is the the exam. Okay. So let's uh, work on this. Right. I think it's visible. Right. We don't need to zoom it anymore. So this is what it has done. That uh, welcome to something, right? Welcome to. Uh, if I remove, how we see in this? If I remove, um, uh, then I want to do something. Here. Okay. Stack. If I remove all this, and I see. What will happen to the page? It should disappear, right? I don't know why it is taking time. It's supposed to be half reload. Okay, let me remove only the level. And I see. Alright. Good. So it's gone. Okay, so let's do something now. I want us to introduce the the level first of all the level is a uh, it's little like this level if you need text on the level you introduce this text let's say hello ccl students and i see can you see it written here 
at yes. the top there. You can control it using these uh, properties. If you want it at the center, you introduce horizontal. Then you say center what expand. Horizontally, can you see it is center expand? Yes. Right. So then vertical. Can you see it's written out where? Mm -hmm. You can play around with it. If you want to understand these things, you have to play around with this uh, com component. Maybe you need a text color. Maybe the color you need is, say, um, white. You know, white will not show, right? Mm -hmm. White. Of course, it's there. Then maybe I need um, a background color to be what? Blue. Blue. Right. So, but then the the text if you, you can you can give it size, font size. Say large, for example. So you see, these are things you need to actually you need to do something. You need to play around with them. But this color seems to be somehow very cost cost cutter. Let me use something there. Uh, yeah, this is great. For example, even though somehow they are pretty, it's not the color that matters. So, but then, this is not what we intended doing. We want to lay components so that when we click on the button, we do something, we see some changes, right? Yeah. So, I think um, we should remove all these, uh, um, most, mostly you know, the, the vertical something, the vertical option. This cannot be done like this. So we need to control it. Let's use a grid layout. I think it's going to help in uh, giving it a good something. In a good shape. In little stack. So I introduce grid. Okay. So within the grid, I go for grid. Row definition, right? And this row definition, I need what? I need height. Is it height? Uh, grid row definitions. Definitions. Right? Repeat. Oh, oh, I'm not confusing myself. Sorry. You said? No definition. Uh -huh. This is what I want. Definitions, then you now row definition, right? you can make it auto so I need only two components now is it two no three components so I have to introduce three components like this okay then after this then I, I introduce the component I can still use stack it will be easier you can also use your grid to step the component I can use stack Okay, then I introduce what we call attached, attached what property, grid what grid row. Which of the rows do you want to? The first row. If it is, if you want to divide into columns, then you remove two. This is what I'm doing. 
what I've done is for this level. Okay. So then I introduce a level here. Let's say the background color is what? We said um, is it brown? Brown. And the text itself. Let's see. Let me just see a message. For example. And then the, the text column. White, right? So what I'm doing. You know our emulator will also be. Can you see? It's giving us what whatever you're doing here. Right? Yes. So now if you look at it, it started from there, from the topmost corner. Then if, if you like, you need to give it some kind of padding where you specify either padding or margin. Then you specify the left, the right, the top, and you understand. So if you don't need anything on the left, you leave it as it is, zero. Then you move to maybe you need 20 here. And then can you see it has moved down as we are, you know, working here. And then um, if you don't need anything there, you leave it as zero. And then if you need any, any padding from the bottom, you give it. So this is the first component. Then you, you create stack again for the second component. And then you specify the grid and what the grid row for the what second company it is one you know grid starts from zero which is the next row and then you start the next one is a level is an entry entry that is like text box so you now see entry something like this Maybe you need a placeholder. Placeholder. What is it going to be displayed? There. Let's say name. Or supply name. Can you see as I'm typing it is being displayed here? That is hot reload. Sorry. Supply name. Next. Then, what do you, if I want to access it from the cut behind, the dot CS, what do I use? Then you are going to use name. Name, but you prefix it with this. Can you see? If you can recall the other time we talk about this prefix. This, you prefix it with this X. Then it enables you to to call it to access it from the code behind x then you prefix it and then you see as i said x can you see name is there so what kind of name do i that's the name of the variable now okay you know this is the level name so now let's say entry entry name so this is how we access it from the code behind are we there then the next stack which is the last one Stack. Uh, grid. Yes. Row two. So, what do I do? I need a button. So this button now. Button. Of course, you can go by that one if you like. That's if you want to add some things. So what is the text for the button? Mm. That is the, le the, the name of the, the, the level. Mm. Click me. Is that? Yes, yes. Click me. Okay, can you see button is there? If you want to give it a, a background color. Background color. Okay. 
Yes, you. Let's say blue, for example. Okay, and then you need to give the text another color, right? For it to, to be shown. Let me go by width, right? So this message will mean message to be displayed after what? After clicking. Right. So this is what we have. And then we need to work on the, the, the functionality from the code behind. Let me stop this video here and then we check the next video immediately so this video doesn't become